So, pose from lines. We can estimate the pose of an object from lines. Um, this is particularly applicable to man-made objects, uh, many of which are primarily composed of planar surfaces. So, the edges of those surfaces may appear as lines or line segments in the image. If we have a geometric model of the object, an a priori model, we can estimate its pose from the observed lines in the image. And as we've seen, the Huff transform can be used to find lines even in highly cluttered images. And as we'll see, at least three lines are needed to determine the pose. In this particular uh, presentation, we'll use a least squares method, namely Newton's method, to find the pose from the line correspondences. So recall that the equation of a line in a 2D image is uh, given by an equation ax plus by plus c equals zero. And also recall that the projection of a 3D point xyz onto a 2D image point uh, is given by x over z, y over z. So this is in normalized image coordinates where we consider the focal length f to be equal to one. So substituting in uh, for x and y into this first equation, we get a capital X plus B capital Y plus C capital Z equals zero, where the capital XYZ are the 3D coordinates of the point. So this actually is an equation of a plane with normal uh, A, B, C, and that plane passes through the origin here. So this figure shows the image plane here, Here's our 2D observed image line, and here's, a, uh, here's the, the 3D line that uh, we're projecting onto the image plane. So the normal is the perpendicular to this plane here. Okay, a 3D line can be represented by a three-dimensional point P and a three-dimensional vector V. So we can transform that point um, and that direction to camera coordinates, from world coordinates to camera coordinates, using the standard rigid transformation uh, by multiplying a rotation matrix, adding a translation vector. So we transform the, the, the origin of the, the line, the point that lies on the line, and we also rotate the line's direction into the camera's coordinate system. So the point um, is also on that plane that we observed in the previous slide. So it is also normal to the, to the plane. So if I take the vector to the point P, in this case P prime in camera coordinates, um, that is perpendicular to the normal to the plane that that lies on. Also the, the three-dimensional vector uh, direction of the line V prime is also lying in that plane. So it is also perpendicular to the plane. So I have that those two dot products uh, equal to zero. So um, if I go back to world coordinates, um, I can I can substitute in what v prime and p prime are, and I get the equation n dot r v equals zero, and n dot r p plus t equals zero, where v, p, and t these are all the coordinates of the line, the parameters of the line in uh, world coordinates. So this is two equations for, uh, produced by this one line, this one observed line correspondence. Um, we actually will need to find six unknowns to determine the pose, so we need uh, at least three lines. If we have more than three, if we have n lines, we can solve for r and t by minimizing the error uh, composed of the um, squares of the dot products of n dot rv, n dot rp plus t here. So a motivating example for this would be navigation in a uh, hallway in a building. So let's say you wanted to uh, determine where you were in a building and provide some information to a user just from an image like this. So if we had a map of the building in terms of uh, the dimensions of line segments and the presence of doorways, et cetera, we could match the observed line segments in the image 
with our model and determine the pose of the user. So here's one way to do that. We first um, take the uh, edge detection of that original image, let's say using the Canny operator, and then fit line segments or lines to that image. Um, this is the result of doing that, fitting, uh, doing a Huff transform on those edge points to determine um, uh, lines. So in this particular um, figure, the um, uh, blue lines were obtained from the edges on the top half of the image and the green lines from the uh, edges on the lower half of the image. All right, so one th other thing we need is uh, to use vanishing points. So v parallel lines in 3D appear to intersect in 2D. So this figure shows uh, three lines on a cube, all parallel, and they all appear, if you extend them, they appear to intersect at a single point. So that's called a vanishing point. We would also get the same thing for these vertical lines, but of course that's going to be uh, way up here. I guess at infinity, it kind of looks like because they're parallel in the image. So this will help us find line correspondences because it finds the set of lines that are parallel. So uh, we should have multiple lines that are parallel to the wall floor edge, basically the, the edge running between the wall and the floor. So those lines will all intersect at a common vanishing point. Whereas lines arising from clutter or noise will probably not be parallel and therefore they will not intersect at a vanishing point. So to find vanishing points, um, we can use a voting scheme. So we can uh, basically project all of our lines into uh, a bin space here and vote at each pixel or um, region of the image. So lines that pass through a, a common point, many lines passing through a common point, um, will create a large voting uh, population in that bin. Um, and you can also um, do this scheme by weighting by the, the strength of the line in terms of its length or the uh, magnitude of the gradients along the line. So we, once we find peaks like this, we just keep those line segments that have contributed to that pin, that peak, and discard all the other ones. So this can identify the lines that are parallel to the wall and the floor, for example, all of these. They're all passing through um, this common vanishing point. So in this particular example, we used a two-dimensional voting plane, but uh, it's actually better to use a spherical system because if you think about it, these vertical lines are going to intersect at a vanishing point that are not on this image. They're going to be way above the image. So you, you would want to um, extend this uh, parameter space to be a, a full sphere around the, the object. Okay, so once we've found these line segments that are all parallel, we still need to find correspondences, namely which lines are the ones that correspond to this, this, this edge here, this lower right corner or edge and the lower left edge. And also which ones, which vertical segments correspond to doors um, or hallway intersections. So there, this is actually a kind of a difficult problem, a correspondence problem, but a simple method is to just say that the left hallway line, this one, is the one that is slanting to the right, but it's the one that's the most vertical. So we're making an assumption that the camera is, is vertical here, the, the person is standing straight up. And the right hallway line is the one that passes through the vanishing point that's left leaning but it's the most vertical left-leaning one. As far as vertical lines, um, this particular work did not try to identify correspondences between vertical lines and hallways and doors. Um, it just tried to find uh, a vertical direction. So from that, we can't actually determine all six degrees of freedom of the pose. We can only determine five degrees of freedom. 
So as we said before, our six degree to pose estimation requires uh, the known position and direction for at least three model lines. If we, um, if we all only want to find five degrees of freedom, then we just need uh, two lines and a direction. So here we're going to use these two lines and this vertical line. So we don't, we won't be able to recover the uh, distance along the hallway, just our orientation within the hallway um, and our position perpendicular to the hallway. So this student did um, some experiments with a set of hallway images and successfully identified the floor in most of them um, and also measured the ground truth camera pose. So the position was generally found to within six inches and the failure cases were due to uh, usually due to not detecting a wall floor line. Here's an example of a failure case where it's uh, using this uh, edge as the as the floor edge as opposed to this one. Here's a case where the clutter associated with all of these extra edges um, caused it to, to misidentify the vanishing point. Here's the entire set of images that were tested. Um, the ones labeled in green were successfully matched. The ones in red were incorrectly matched. 